Hi folks, I'm Jared Bentley. You're watching the Johnson City Press Week in Review right here on johnsoncitypress.com. The number of active novel coronavirus infections in Northeast Tennessee grew by 89 on Thursday, pushing the total number of active cases past 2,900 for the first time. There are 155 new cases in the upper eight counties for a total of 4,734. The average number of new cases per 100,000 over the last two weeks is growing. 44 deaths in the upper eight counties total, but no new deaths reported on Thursday. 66 new recoveries for a total of 1,778. 2,912 active cases in Northeast Tennessee. Ballot Health reported an 11-person decrease in COVID-19 hospitalizations on Thursday, tied for the largest single-day decrease the system has seen thus far. As of Thursday morning, there were 106 COVID-19 inpatients with an additional 19 people awaiting test results. Of the confirmed cases, 23 are in intensive care and 13 are on ventilators. On Wednesday, the system reported that ICU was at more than 87% of capacity, while patient occupancy was at 92.9% .9 across the system. The number of available COVID-19 beds sits at 53, an increase of eight since Wednesday and 18 from Monday. A total of 475 school-aged children have been infected with COVID-19 in Northeast Tennessee. To find a listing of testing sites and their hours and availability, visit our website or check out Jonathan Roberts' article in today's paper. With novel coronavirus-related hospitalizations rising, Ballad Health officials said Wednesday they are preparing to implement the next phase of the system's surge plan if necessary. Since mid-June, the number of patients being treated for COVID-19 has risen steadily, reaching a peak of 125 on Monday. Since July 31st, COVID-19 hospitalizations in Ballot Health facilities are up about 29%, with 117 patients hospitalized Wednesday. A model from the healthcare system shows its current trend is tracking much more closely to its worst case scenario of more than 300 hospitalizations than its moderate scenario that would have seen hospitalizations peak at 100 in October. Stage one, which was implemented in late July, increased COVID-19 bed capacity to 150. Stage two would bring that total to 200, while a third stage could see the system set aside 250 COVID-dedicated beds. In the midst of closings and changes throughout the area, the AMC Theater in Johnson City is scheduled to reopen on August 27th, according to a notice posted on the theater's website. The theater's safety procedures will include a requirement that masks be worn at all times and will be required in the auditorium, but customers can remove them while eating or drinking. The theater chain is also keeping auditorium capacity at 30% or less, and theaters with traditional seating will have every other row blocked off. The company will ask guests to leave an empty seat between them and others. After temporarily closing on July 24th, Marquee Cinema's Pinnacle 12 in Bristol will reopen on August 21st. In light of the rising numbers and health risks associated with COVID-19, the Southern Conference has voted to move the fall sports regular season competitions and championships to the spring. The fall sports affected by the decision are football, men's and women's cross country, men's and women's soccer, and volleyball. Teams that usually practice and compete in the fall but have their championships in the spring can continue to practice and play if permitted by their school. The SOCON was one of the last football championship subdivision leagues to announce its plans for the fall. The FCS playoffs have already been postponed with the hopes of holding them in the spring. While I understand that nothing will ever be normal again, let's hope that sometime soon we do begin to see hints of normalcy. I'm Jared Bentley and this has been the Johnson City Press Week in Review. Thanks for watching.